They're currently at $58.98 a share. Yahoo analysts estimate them moving up to $79.25 a share in the next 12 months. Hey guys, today we are going to be doing the analysis on Papa John's International. Now you know in this channel I like to drop the analysis on the fundamentally sound stocks at their annual low price in my watch list. However, Papa John's is not in my watch list. They would not be considered what I would consider fundamentally sound. And you're going to see why very shortly. However, I am including them here because they're a very popular pizza chain. So I want to put them in here for you guys to get the information on. Now, they have an earnings report dropping on May 9th. That is a few days away, but four days away. And... They're currently at $58.98 a share. Yahoo analysts estimate them moving up to $79.25 a share in the next 12 months. We see that they've dropped a few weeks and little green candle hit and they dropped this week, but they moved up overall but they ended the week lower than where they started it. Now this week, we see not a sizable move down, but a decent. They moved down some more, but in any event, let's jump into the analysis on this stock. Before we jump into the analysis, I want to take a look at a couple of things. First, these are a couple of series that I drop on my channel to let you guys know what fundamentally sound stocks are moving up from their 52-week low, from their annual low price. Now, Papa John's is not in this. It's not a stock in my watch list. But I just want to make you guys aware of some channels, some videos on the channel. I put out a this week's stock winners every week so you can see what fundamentally sound stocks at their annual low price are starting to move up as well as a this month's option pick where one of those is picked from this week's stock winners to get an option pick. And so far, just about every month, of the different option picks I've chosen, one has done around 100%. But in any event, let's stop wasting time and jump into the analysis on this stock, Papa John's. Okay, guys. So we're looking at Papa John's International, ticker symbol PZZA, and I like to look at the low and the high prices on these stocks so that we could see what or anticipate what could possibly happen in this upcoming year or current year, as I should say. And in 2019, Papa John's had negative earnings, negative 24 cents. In 2020, it was $1.28. 2021, it was 12 cents. So we're seeing some wild swings. 2022, it was $1.89. 2023, it was $2.48. And 2024, it's a projection 
but it's at 248 just like it was last year. Could go higher by the end of the year. Could go lower, could stay the same. But so far it's set at $2.48. But I don't like these wall swings. It's negative in 2019. Goes all the way up to $1.28 in 2020. And then it's down to 12 cents in 2021. But in 2022, it moved back up. And 2023, it moved even higher. Now we'll see what happens in 2024. If it stays the same, if it drops, or if it increases. In any event, let's look at the low and the high prices for that year, those years. In 2019, the low price was $35.36 a share, high price $60.80 a share. That was an increase of 71.95% over the course of the year. It was negative PEs, but still we saw an increase. In 2020, at the low price, it was at $33.35 a share. At the high price, $95.93 a share. That was an increase of 187.65% that year. That was a decent move. 2021. Low price $75.22 a share, high price $133.38 a share. That was an increase of 77.32% over the course of the year. In 2022, low price, it was $66.01 a share. High price, $127.18 a share. That was an increase of 92.67% over the course of the year. And in 2023, low price, $62.11, $62.11 a share. High price, $93.98 a share. That was an increase of 51.31% over the course of the year. Now, currently they're at their low price, $58.98. And Yahoo analysts estimate them to move up to $79.25 in the next 12 months. If that's actually the way it turns out, that will be an increase of 34.37% this year. Not much, but it's it's a decent move for a stock 30 some percent a year. We've seen higher previous years, but it's a decent move. They're currently at a P.E. ratio of 23.78. Now, in 2020, which was the COVID lockdown years, they were at a P.E. ratio of 26.05. That was their low P.E. ratio. In 2021, it was 626.83. It was ridiculous. 2022, 67.29. And 2023, 25.04. So what does that mean for us? What that means for us is the only year that was lower in the five previous years was 2019, where the low P.E. ratio was negative 147.33. 
But if we exclude that, this would be the lowest P-E ratio that it's been at in the previous four years, which means based on P-E ratio, this stock is at the lowest price it's been at in the pre in five years, right? They have a free cash flow yield of 4.63%. And they have an earnings report dropping on May 9th. And that's a few days away because this is May 5th. Now, bear in mind, an earnings report is like going to a casino. It can come out a good earnings report, and the stock price can really, really jump. It can come out a bad earnings report, and the stock price can really drop. So you have to take that into consideration when you decide if you want to buy the stock, if you should buy it before the earnings report or wait until it drops and buy it after. In any event, let's go to the income statement. And for this income statement, not good news that I see. So this company made one billion six hundred and nineteen million two hundred and forty eight thousand in twenty nineteen. Of that money, after paying off all expenses. They lost seven million six hundred and thirty three thousand. That is a zero point forty seven percent loss. In twenty twenty COVID lockdown years, they made one billion eight hundred and thirteen million two hundred and thirty four thousand in sales and revenue. Of that, after paying all expenses, they retained forty-one million seven hundred and thirty-seven thousand. That was a two point three zero percent return. Now, that's a pretty low return, but let's consider it's COVID lockdowns. Let's move on to the next year and see what happens. In 2021, they made two billion sixty-eight million four hundred and twenty-one thousand. Of that, they retained four million seventy-three thousand. That was a zero point two zero percent return, even lower than the COVID year. In 2022. They made two billion one hundred and two million one hundred and three thousand. Of that, they retained after paying expenses sixty-seven million three hundred and sixty-two thousand for a three point two zero percent profit margin. And in twenty twenty-three, they made two billion one hundred and thirty-five million. 713,000. Of that, after paying expenses, they retained 82,098,000. That was a 3.84% return. So, they are not getting huge returns on all the sales and revenue they're taking in. They're taking in from one billion to two billion, or from one point six billion to two point one billion. Their sales and revenue are pretty decent, but after paying expenses, 
they're keeping like two, three percent for profit margin. One year they even lost money. One year they didn't even get above one percent. So having said that, let's look at our return on equity. 2019, 2.41%. 2020, negative 15.64%. 2021, negative 2.36%. 2022, negative 24.89%. And 2023, negative 18.51%. So their return on equity is horrible. I would want to see a return on equity of at least 10%, preferably in the 20% range. But they only had 2% the first year and negative for all following years. Now, their debt to equity is really scaring me because it's negative all five years. So let's look at what's going on with the balance sheet. And we see that with their balance sheet, in four of those five years, their current liabilities exceeded their current assets of which we like to see the opposite. We like to see the current assets exceed the current liabilities, which happened for only one year, and that was slightly. But if we look at total assets and total liabilities, even if we can live with current liabilities exceeding current assets, like a lot of banks have that, Total assets we always want to see above current total liabilities for all five years. This company's total assets was less than their total liabilities. So all the news I'm seeing on this company, bad. Now, as far as dividends, in 2019, they paid out 29,422,000 in dividends. In 2020, they paid 31,782,000 in dividends. In 2021, they paid 46,298,000 in dividends. In 2022, they paid fifty-five million nine hundred and seventy-eight thousand dividends, and in twenty twenty-three, they paid fifty-nine million seven hundred and seventy-one thousand in dividends. Now, let's look at changing capital stock. In other words, is this company selling more shares of stock, which we hate, or buying back more shares of stock, which we love, as shareholders? In 2019, they sold 268,540,000 worth. In 2020, they sold 27,921,000 worth. In 2021, they bought back 249,177,000 worth. In 2022, they bought back 120,964,000 worth. And in 2023, they bought back two hundred and eight million ninety six thousand worth. So sort of a mixed bag. Now 
let's look at the, their free cash flow. As far as free cash flow in 2019, they had 24 million 38,000. In 2020, 150 million 787,000. 2021, 116 million 116,000. 2022, 39 million 417,000. And in 2023, 119 million 892,000. That's pretty decent as far as the free cash flow. However, with companies that pay a dividend, their dividend actually comes from their free cash flow. I like to see if they actually have enough free cash flow to pay that dividend, or are they getting that dividend money up other ways to try to attract buyers to their stock? since it's not a strong stock. Well, in 2019, after paying the dividends, they were negative 5,384,000. In 2020, after paying the dividend, they still had 119,005,000. In 2021, after paying the dividend, they still had 69,818,000. In 2022, after paying the dividends, they were negative 16,561,000. In 2023, after paying the dividends, they still had 60,121,000. So a couple of years, they couldn't really afford to pay those dividends they were paying. Now let's look at the statistics on this stock and we know that the beta speaks about the volatility of the stock. The market moves in a volatility of one. So if the beta is less than one, it moves less than the general market. If it's greater than one, it moves more than the general market. This one has a beta of 1.15, moves a little more than the market. But their book value, I have a video on the channel speaking about the truth about book value and it explains why I don't really put a lot of emphasis on the book value. I rather look at whether a company is buying back or selling more shares. But the one time that I stand up and take notice of the book value, which speaks of how much the company has to pay you for each share of your stock if the company were to suddenly close down is when that book value is negative. And in this case, the book value is negative. Negative $14.13 a share with a PB ratio of negative 4.17. Now, this company's last dividend it paid out was $0.46 cents a share. They have $32.94 million outstanding shares of this company on the market. And of those, 1.28% is owned by insiders or those who work at or involved in the company and institutions remember I get these statistics from Yahoo I don't know how they come up with over 100% but institutions it's 114.42% that's ownership by large banks and institutions 
What I will say is, a company with the institutions is that large, it's being bought. They have a PEG ratio of 2.01 and a dividend yield of 3.12%. Mr. Ravi Thanawali, born 1985, is the interim CEO, CFO and Principal Accounting Officer, and Papa John's International is in the restaurants industry, consumer cyclical sector. In any event, that's it for my analysis on Papa John's, guys. I look forward to speaking to you in the great in the next video and have a great day.